Oh, I guess it is the credits. Okay. They had a song called, uh, Yes, or something. It was, a uh, different... It was, it was a different song. I, I don't know why that's not playing now, but I guess... Who, who the hell even knows? Uh, so yeah. I, I don't know where to begin. Um, I guess I could talk about the original Homeworld. So, how close is this to original Homeworld? Not very. Um, there was a lot of balance changes. A lot of really odd decisions come now. Mind you, this the story in Homeworld One is terrific. It's really great, and you got a taste of it pretty much exactly how it comes apart. It's like a basically like it's your um, rags to riches or like sorry underdog story. That's that's the word I was, I was uh, looking for. And everyone loves loves a good underdog story, and it's also great because it gives you that sense of awe and mystery throughout most of the game. Like you're, there's everything's a surprise uh, throughout it, which is really good. And and the story just transferred over completely. I mean, all they had to do—it's a remaster version. All they had to do is copy it. The story was not as strong in Homeworld Two because it, if you've seen Homeworld Two, you, you'll if you kind of delve too deep into it, there's a couple of sort of inconsistencies and plot holes regarding the the hyperspace technology and things like that they, they, they just kind of like reworked the story in a way that roughly kind of translates if you go too deep into it it doesn't make any sense but uh, I guess like I'm pretty sure someone could probably explain it pretty well but it, you if you start going into it too much it starts to be confusing regarding to how many spy hyperspace cores there are why do small ships have hyperspace uh who the hell is the juke etc cetera, etc cetera. so a uh, homeworld one on its own just on, on standalone it's basically like I guess the matrix in its in its own right you know, and everything that comes after it was kind of like, oh, it takes place in, like, you've ever seen the movie The Matrix. Like, the first movie was really, really good, uh, when it just stands on its own. But if you start going into, like, the other movies, it starts to go like, oh, this doesn't quite make sense. Although it's kind of cool, because it takes place in the same universe. And I liked The Matrix. You know, but the, 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 you, do, you don't think the other movies are quite as good. Uh, that's a really, maybe, odd comparison to make, but that's all I can say. Um... And it was a classic game. Like it was, it was 1999. This this kind of came out, and it brought brought together like some interesting new technology with regards to like 3D RTS. It actually made 3D RTS work, and it actually was it was really good. Although like it came out with a good story along to come with it, and that's kind of rare to see the two elements together. Usually you have like a a good story and boring gameplay, or a boring a good gameplay and kind of a boring story. But like it's it just once in a while you see one of those things that's uh, really good with regards to both, and I really liked it. It's actually been a very long time since I touched upon this campaign. Uh, that's why I was kind of just unfamiliar with everything that was happening because I couldn't tell what was a change to the remastered engine because there were changes uh, overall, and yeah, it was it was it was pretty good overall. The the, the actual homeworld campaign part. Now as for the remastered version. Remastered version was, wasn't, was like, I was actually kind of disappointed. It was worse than I thought it was going to be. What the hell picture is this? On the side. That was the ugliest fucking picture I've ever seen. Uh, anyways. The remastered version was actually pretty disappointing. Uh, and I actually looked it up later. The Gearbox bought it for 1.3 million. And I had, I sort of had doubts about it. Because Gearbox's track record has not been good for the last half a decade. Uh... I mean, the best they've come out come out with is Homeworld, which is uh, sorry, not Homeworld. <laughs> well, technically, that still that still is the case. No, the best they've come out with before prior to Homeworld is uh, uh, Borderlands, and I think that's pretty much it. And Borderlands, I found, was a, like something that you only play once, and it gets really grindy and boring, and it was also very consolefied. Uh, so I didn't have much faith in their ability to make a 3D RTS PC game, and I still don't think they did a terribly great job with it. Because, I mean, okay, think about it this way. This this whole remastered thing, it was completely based upon Homeworld 1 and 2. And this is the best they could do. So they didn't make the story here. They did they did remake this the cutscenes and stuff. But they had they had the, the the basic, the classic game to work with. And it was already a classic. So they did a great job with the cutscenes. They did a great job with the, the graphics. The actual engine and programming part was actually pretty bad. 
I did not like it at all. Um, it just it glitched out way too much. I saw I constantly saw ships not doing what they were supposed to. I don't think it was necessarily tested. I don't know if it was tested all that well. I'll be honest. Um, it just felt like it was kind of not very good in that sense. Because it was just like, I'd see ships just kind of like, even fighters just kind of like sitting in front of things, just being sitting ducks. Like a lot of the, a lot of the, the advantages around fighters and stuff was always like, you know, the, the, the formations were always pretty good for that. I tried using them in these last three missions a bit more to see their effectiveness. And the effectiveness was okay. But it's like, everything's not necessarily a direct counter or anything like that. It's kind of, it's, it's weird. I'm trying to describe it to you guys. It's like... The AI just seemed off. It was wonky and kind of not fun to play with. Oh god, and I forgot to fucking say, the auto-scaling AI was absolutely horrible. Because you can tell what was supposed to be, what was auto-scaling. Because you just see like a mess of frigates, one type of frigate, a mess of... And they would like just send it in, just like blindly. Like there's no AI to them at all. I could... I was actually surprised I got away with as much salvaging as I did. Because I think I recollect in the, in the first game... Uh, a lot of the ships would hate salvage corvettes, especially when they were capturing, so they would just try and go help out their own ship. But this time, the, the, in this game, they just completely ignored it. They're like, oh, they're taking our super capital ship and just running in the middle of us. Like, near, at the end, I was doing that all the time. Just, it didn't matter. Uh, I was able to just capture whatever I wanted. So capturing was probably a little bit easier in this game than it was. Like, it wasn't very much a tactical thing, as it was I just kind of sent them in and captured whatever I wanted. Um, so that was kind of bad. Um, the salvaging mechanic is very fun, but the fact that th this game auto scales everything—I mean, it's you got to you got a double-edged sword. It would either make everything too easy, which honestly I kind of did feel the the campaign was a bit e like it was a bit easy. Like I, I actually I didn't really look anything up. I was just kind of going based upon my own memory of what happens. Um, and even in some even in some missions, I was kind of like I'm not going to do anything to give myself an advantage. Kind of a thing like I didn't uh, activate the gravel generators on the uh, junkyard dog when, when I know I could have done that. And there was a, also another case I could have captured all the frigates on that one on that one mission with their giant sphere, um, the bridge's size, things like that. I just didn't do it. I mean, because the thing is, it auto scales anyway. So having more ships, I think, was detrimental because there was a like in the last two missions particularly, I had to send all my ships to the front of the mothership, and that took like a literal like 10 minutes. So I think having this many ships was actually detrimental, because the auto-scaling would not care. It like it was actually a terrible system. Nobody liked it in Homeworld 2, and they and they introduced it back here, which actually kind of worked against the game. Like it, it was one of those things nobody liked, so why... Like they, they removed fuel, but I think they did that mostly because it was based upon the Homeworld 2 engine, and they just... Like there were certain things, I think a lot of their decisions around the balance and the, uh, like uh, around a lot of the elements of this game were just solely based upon how much effort it takes to create. Not they weren't strictly going to recreate, uh, like recreate uh, the original homeworld kind of experience. They were just going for, they, they skipped on some things. And so the auto scaling was, I think the easiest thing for them to do. And so, as I said, it was pretty bad that they introduced that again. Cause as I said, there was a couple of missions where it's just like, oh, there's like, 50 assault frigates for some reason and it was like it was like a really weird like t formation because they just all spawned and it's awful uh for that so uh, all overall i think this is just the, the, this game overall is i would say it's just it's just good and i i can't imagine have having been played it, playing it like at the what well, the 1.0 version because i'm playing the 2.0 version where they fixed a lot of these bugs and things like that um What's the deal with this? Battlestar? Okay, whatever. Yeah, Campbell. Oh, yeah. Um, Campbell Lane is the voice actor for the Unbound or the, um, uh, I don't know, the, the Bentuzi. He's dead now, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. That, that's rip, rip him. I don't know. I, I would say, I'd say it's just good. And I would say if you want the real experience, you can play... Home, it comes it comes with the Homeworld 1 original, and I would almost suggest going for that, because the campaign... Oh, this is version 2.1 now. Uh, so they, they updated it, apparently. I, I think I mentioned that at some point during the campaign, but 
I don't think it was that much. I don't, I, I don't think it was that great, honestly. I think, honestly, they should have done something along the lines of um, like removing that stupid auto-scaling and just remaking the balance of the game and having difficulty levels. Like maybe like the original homeworld difficulty with the original amount of ships was like normal, and then they have like a maybe an easier difficulty because the campaign was pretty difficult in in uh, in the like in its own in in the one difficulty level that it had. I mean that's what that's a desert's a character. They had difficulty levels, and so classic ended up being more like towards uh, what homeworld one was. But the the, the auto scaling is just horrible. So, and then they could have like the hardest difficulty based upon the fact that, oh, well, people are going to capture a lot of shifts maybe, so maybe we should put like a ridiculous amount of frigates and stuff and maybe not just have them like uh, in one one big clump in one big T formation kind of thing. Maybe just have like multiple groups that kind of come at you or something. I don't know. As I said, at the, at the point I was at, there wasn't a whole lot that could kill me. The thing that did kill me was I didn't expect was them to just focus down my mothership. It caught me a bit off guard, but that was the only time I was really caught off guard, I think. Uh, thus far, so and then I had a crash and some other stuff. So, as I said, I think with regards to this, this is definitely the pretty home world, and that's all I can really say about it. It's not the good gameplay home world necessarily. I mean, they tried. Uh, they brought back some of the. As I said, I read about how the game originally didn't have. Well, the home, the sorry, the remaster version originally didn't have uh, proper formations. They apparently would just split up. Or something along those lines. I, I didn't look in too much into that. But even when I use the formations here, I just didn't feel like they were like they they they, 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 said they had something wrong with them. That's all I know. Like I just I felt like it was detrimental to use them a lot of the time. Uh, although the I guess the defense fighter on spheres weren't so bad. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. But as I said, I think it's just overall good. Uh, but like it doesn't come anywhere close to the excellence that was the original game of this. Uh, it was just, it just was, there was always something wrong and there was always something glitchy or there was some, something always kind of off that kind of made you think, yeah, not that great. Um, but with that being said, I don't regret doing it. I think it was, I think it was great that I finally got to do this for YouTube. But as I said, it, it's one of those things where if, if this is your first time seeing Homeworld, just know that the original game was better than this uh, in terms of the AI and uh, in terms of the, f the, the fleet formations and stuff. Um, it, was just, it was just better overall. However, you saw, ex especially near the end, where I was trying to bring all my ships to the, the, to the enemy. I didn't even make it to the enemy, enemy mothership because that is pretty much how slow the game, the, the original game was actually that slow. It was actually slower than that. Like it, it would take a, like a lot of preparation stuff to get all your ships into, uh, into into position to basically do any kind of attack, which actually made kind of the multiplayer not as good for this kind of a thing. So I wish they um, would speed it up slightly with regards to that. I mean, as I said, Deserts of Karak did that pretty well too. Um, now that I think about it, because that that game was much faster too. The games would take much less time. Uh, and the missions that take much less time, and and and, and the actual like uh, the carrier or the mothership or whatever you want to refer to it as was actually part of that. So, and I will see. That brings me to my next thing, my next point. Um, so, Homeworld Three, uh, which is something we're all looking forward to. I think it's going to be terrible. I, I'll be honest. I think I don't. I don't have very high hopes for this. I I'm ho I, I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm, I'm a pessimist though. Uh, you have to understand that, guys. I'm always pessimistic because that that means I can be, I can never be disappointed. Everything goes exactly as expected. No, but like, I don't think it's gonna be any good because they they made this, and this was based upon the Homeworld One and Two engine, and this is the best AI and stuff they had to offer. They didn't even make their own story, or they didn't make their own units or anything like that. They didn't have to do any of that. Um, and it's just, yeah, this is the best they could come up with. So now imagine them trying to make one on their own um, with their own story. And as I said, look at their track record with like Duke Nukem Forever, uh, Aliens, Colonial Marines or something. I think that was something else they released. I don't know. I, I, as I said, everything they've released has been horrible. I have not even touched like the, the, the Borderlands games now because they're just so boring to me. And so... I, I, I don't know if they can do it. I don't know if they can pull it off. I don't think they can. Um, and I, I will be more than happy to be to admit I'm wrong uh, if it, it turns out to be really good. 
uh, but this this as it is is not really good. It's just it's just kind of like it's uh, as I said, average to good as it's, uh, as I say, and it's completely standing upon the pillar that is the original Homeworld, which was really really good. Um, so as it's something's very off w- w- with this engine, so I I'm not I'm not too appreciative of it, and I'm assuming the reason why they did this whole remaster version and this whole engine thing is because they're planning on re- reusing this engine. I would assume they would. They were going to reuse most of this engine to make another Homeworld game. I mean, you you spend 1.3 million dollars on a game franchise, you you th- this is their plan. I can tell you right now, that's their plan. And I don't like this game engine at all. I think it I think it's lacks a lot of. A box. This is why, like, by the way, they're not doing. I, I, I know there's a couple of people that are like, as I said, they're, they're Homeworld fans are glad that we're seeing Homeworld games again. Okay, like, as I said, this is just my opinion. It's like, congratulations, like, to you that you're glad that they're making this stuff again. But you have to admit, you see that there's a couple of flaws in here. And the, re, the, the, the reason they've released this 2.0 version, because I, I was reading a lot about this, and a lot of people are thinking that Gearbox is doing this from the bottom of their heart or something. Like, oh, they, the game was released, but they didn't have to patch it kind of thing. No, it's because they, as I said, they bought Homeworld, the, the, the ability to make Homeworld games for $1.3 million. It has an existing fan base, which wants games. They're, they're making an engine. This is, their, this is their engine that they're using to make Homeworld 3. They're not just scrapping it and then they're going to fix everything that's wrong with it. No, they're going to build upon this one. And there's, there's so much wrong with it. This is why they did a rewrite of it, because so many people were complaining about the, their initial release of this, because there's something very wrong with it. Um, and they just, yeah, and so you can expect that a lot of this is going to remain in, in Homeworld 3. A lot of the style that you see is going to be in Homeworld 3, if whenever they make that, because they're going to make it. As I said, I don't think they've recouped their, their money yet, uh, ba- just based upon this. And they're, so they're hoping that, you know, this is going to be the, their next big, uh, this is going to be like a, a really big PC game, kind of like on the level of like Half-Life or, or something else, because that's what we've, we've wanted then, right? So, as I said, I don't have very high hopes, uh, but I'll, I'll be more than happy to be wrong. I've been wrong before. I mean, I thought the new Doom was going to be garbage, and it ended up being pretty good. So, like, you know, it's, I, I'm, I'm not like a, uh, I'm, not, I'm not totally sold on one thing, uh, one, one opinion or something like that, but just, just know that's what they're doing. Um, this is this is their home, their their homeworld engine that's going to be used reused several times. Uh, now to get on the next kind of uh, topic, I guess I'm done talking about the game. As said, I was happy to do it, but it's got its issues. Now there's two more homeworld games I haven't done. Well, technically I haven't done Homeworld Two Remastered. I want to do that soon. Uh, it'll come up pretty 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 quickly. Uh, on my channel here because I, I, I did like that. I, I've played Homeworld. The last time I played Homeworld 2, by the way, was pretty much the last time I played it on my channel. Um, so that would be nice coming back to because I'm more familiar with that than I am Homeworld 1 at this point. As I said, I did like Homeworld 1 a bunch when I was a really, really young, but I didn't ever replay it again until now. Like, I played it like for, like a, I guess, like a, a good half a year or something. Um, I, I played it because I could never find friends to play multiplayer with me. And, and when I played the multiplayer, the games were really long. Uh, sometimes I forget. I don't know. Cause I, I, I couldn't last that long in, in the multiplayer games and stuff like that. I wasn't very good at it either, mind you. Uh, but, but yeah, I just, I never replayed through the campaign. I think at one point I attempted to start up, but I only got past Cardins of Kadesh and I think I stopped. But that was that was way before I started doing things for YouTube, and I just never touched it ever since. Um, Cataclysm. There was an expansion for this game called Catacly- Cataclysm. Did not come with. Uh, it did not come with the the remaster version at all, uh, because apparently something was done with the source code. It was lost. Uh, I will be honest with you guys. I have never played Homeworld Cataclysm. I didn't. It was so under advertised. I never knew it was a thing. I never knew it existed. Uh, and until much later, until like I, I like I talked to other homeworld fans, like, "Hey, you play Cataclysm?" I'm like, "No," <laughs> and they're like, "Fuck, why? Why not?" And I'm like, "Oh, because I just didn't know it existed." And it was one of those things. On on the other hand, with like Homeworld One, is like, I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'll get back to, I'll, I'll try a game eventually, and then I just never tried it. Um, so whatever, shame on me. And I'm kind of hoping they maybe do a remastered version of it because. That one I had a look at. I've seen someone else's videos of it a while back, and I know that it's like 
I, I really did like the the movies and stuff, the remastered stuff for that. That was one of my favorite parts. And the, the, the updated graphics was nice. And I'm hoping they do that, at least. I know the gameplay may not be the same. I know I'm complaining about the engine difficulty and stuff, but it'd be nice to do it blind under uh, this. This would be the one thing I would say. As much as people may say um, the same thing I'm saying here, which is like the original was better. And I, I'm not saying that nobody should play the remaster version. I'm just saying the original was better. And I'm pretty sure if they made Cataclysm, the Cataclysm fans would probably say the same thing. But I'm, I think that they're saying that they are doing something for it because technically they own the IP. So I, I, I don't know what the legal bullshit around that is, but I, even without the source code, I mean, it's not, it's not that hard. They, they don't need that. Like it's just, they just have to just transfer all the units in and make the same campaign voice it again. And that's it. Cause as I said, the movies and shit like really old for cataclysm. They're like really, really dated at this point. So it'd be, I would be essentially playing like a super classic game at that point and one I've never played before. So I don't know. I, I'll give them a bit to maybe make that and then I'll touch upon that at some point. But I will do Homeworld 2 remaster pretty soon just to see how that's changed because that I'm much more familiar with. Uh, and we'll see because that was the faster version of Homeworld, which I liked a lot. So even though the campaign wasn't as good, as strong as this one, um, it's still worth going into. So. That's pretty much it for that. Uh, I guess we'll see, like, uh, I'll show you my campaign. This is how I made my uh, my uh, ships all green and stuff. I just kind of made them like that. So you have Vager, Kushan, Tidan. This is kind of one of the things they have in this game. I just made mine green and white. I never showed this to you guys at the very beginning, but that's essentially how that works. Yeah, player versus CPU, and they have multiplayer for this, uh, if that's your thing. Uh, and they also have another homeworld game, which we will, as I said, touch upon that pretty soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed my playthrough. Uh, I hope I wasn't too whiny or bad or anything like that. I, I, I tried to represent it in the best way I could, but remember, I haven't played in such a long time. So, But I think I still did pretty good, uh, all things considered. Like I had the nice, uh, a nice assortment of shifts by the end, which didn't even go to the, mo the mothership at the end. Uh, but, you know, didn't even get to kill it myself. But, hey, what are you going to do? So, hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys for next time or the next Homeworld game that I do. So take care, everyone. Bye.